Hey, guess what? The game I'm reviewing today is a game of many firsts. It's the first game on the PlayStation that we're covering. That makes it the first fifth generation console game that we're covering since no one on our team ever owned a 3DO, an Atari Jaguar, or a Sega Saturn. Because it's a game on a fifth gen console, that means it also is the first time we're covering a game that has a live recorded orchestra on its soundtrack, and it's the first that has actual recorded human voices at least in its original console release. We have played remakes and remasters that will sometimes have, you know, orchestral recordings or voice acting included. But with all those firsts, is it any surprise that this was the best-selling PlayStation game in Japan in 1995? If you hadn't already seen the title of this video, would you be surprised to learn that that game is Ark the Lad? Boop, boop, boop. Hey, I'm Michael, and thanks for joining me for my review of Ark the Lad. Ark the Lad is a tactical role-playing game developed by G-Craft and published by Sony. Pardon any mispronunciations I might make here, but this game was directed by Kosato and produced by Ryoji Akagawa and Toshiro Tsuchida. The latter worked on many of the front mission games as director, producer, writer, and worked on Final Fantasies 10, 11, and 13, always in some sort of battle director or battle planner type role. The story, like most of the subsections of this game, is just fine. Our band of heroes need to travel around the world in search of the Guardians, element-based god-like super beings, and obtain their blessing and a special stone that will allow them to open the Ark and receive great power to defeat evil. Along the way, they do what they can to help out various communities in need, as monsters are posing as leaders in many of the countries. The villains are also after the power contained in the Ark. Sounds like most JRPGs. Really, this even sounds like most Zelda games. Luckily, the pacing of this game is swift. We move from place to place pretty quickly. The world seems like a thinly veiled version of the real world, complete with stereotypical to culturally insensitive portrayals of other parts of the world. More on that later. I think one of the most interesting things about this world is how it's not immediately clear how technologically advanced the world is. Most of the thinly veiled Japan-like country where you start seems like typical swords and sorcery fantasy fair, but then you get fancy airships and trains that bring in more in line with steampunk, and then toward the end of the game, there's a television broadcast. It's kind of a fun reveal. The characters in this game are just fine, as are the heroes specifically. Ark, Poco, Gogun, and Iga are all exact replicas of the tropes you'd expect from a game like this. Like, isn't it hilarious that Poco is always talking about how he's hungry and tired and scared? No one's ever shamed a fat character like that before, and it's hilarious. Please correctly read the sarcasm in that. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> also tired? Everything about Chongara. I'm not entirely sure the exact harmful ethnic stereotypes they were going for with him, but basically every one of his characteristics is negative. The way his character is written and handled is the worst part of this game by far. But there are two characters who are pretty cool. Tosh is also a very tropey character, but he's well written enough that I don't mind as much with him. But the best character in the game is Kukuru. A bad decision of hers sets off the events of the game, and she has a pretty strong character arc in owning up to her mistake, training to be better, and then ending the game being very selfless. The villains are mostly pretty strong in this game. The Ark Ghoul seems to be set up as somewhat of a final boss, and it's disappointing to discover that he's not anything special. The rest of the villains are quite strong, each showing a different type of evil, behind the scenes machinations, trying to have the heroes secretly killed, misleading the heroes, or just being directly violent. The NPCs are present in the game. They're hardly there. One interesting fact, Polta, Ark's mother, is the second of two named female characters in this game. So uh, this game isn't so great with gender balance. 
The graphics in this game are pretty strong, but nothing too special. They honestly don't look like much of a step up from SNES RPGs in the regular gameplay, but there are some pretty cool cutscenes. The airship and train cutscenes are the strongest, until you've seen the airship animation a few times. It takes a decent amount of time, and it's the same every time after the first couple. The design is, again, just fine. The characters and monsters are moderately interesting. Some of the battle maps are pretty cool, but too few of them have fun gimmicks in them. The standout in the design is the transportation, again. I think the airship and train just look so cool in this game. Thank God for model trains. The musical score of this game is pretty awesome right from the opening credits. That's largely because it's one of the game's fully orchestrated tracks with an actual live orchestra. The orchestra in this recording is the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, and they sound great. The two composers of this game were Masahiro Ando and Hirotaka Izumi. These two were also part of the Japanese jazz fusion band T-Square, and both had most of their careers in that realm. Ando did also compose music for many of the Gran Turismo games. You can hear their jazz fusion-like sound in most of the tracks on this album, which are fully synthesized in their sound. It can be a bit cheesy at points, but overall there are some fun chords in the score, and it mostly sounds pretty good. The sound effects can be a little goofy at points, but this game also includes some voice acting like I said before, but only in Japanese. The characters say the name of the move they're performing. It's simple, but it does help to make these otherwise mostly stale characters come to life a bit. The gameplay is the strongest part of this game. It's nothing super flashy, but it works. It's fun to experiment with each character's skills and figure out the best place to put them on the field so they can deal damage and remain safe. This game requires a little more grinding than I'd like, but overall the difficulty level is pretty good, making this a game that's not a slog to play. It's good that this game goes by as quickly as it does, though, because the story wasn't really strong enough to support much more than this runtime. At this length, the fun battles make the game pretty enjoyable overall. There's one important thing that Ark the Lad is not a first for this channel. It's not the first tactical RPG that we reviewed. I previously reviewed Shining Force. I didn't love that game. I gave it a 68% or a D+. Live Alive, another tactical RPG, fared much better with an 87%. What do I think of Ark the Lad? I think it's fine. The formula, based on the small scores that I've been showing you throughout, gave this game a 73%. I gave this game an 81%. Average those two scores together, and you get a 77%, or a C. Ark the Lad has a few great new things in it compared to many games that came before it, and it's leading to much better games coming after it, including the superior Ark the Lad 2. I'd say give Ark the Lad a shot if you're curious about the entire series, or if you're a tactical RPG super fan and you just can't get enough of them. If you're not sure about it, you could probably skip this game without missing much. If you've played this game, what do you think of it? Do you disagree with any of my points? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Give this video a like if you liked it or give it a pity like if you didn't like it. To the side here is another video YouTube thinks you might like. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Ramin and I, often with our besties Erica and Molly, talk about video games and music mostly, but we also talk a little bit about TV and movies. Until next time, maintain your groovy selves.